In this video, we will be discussing the most terrifying execution and torture device that ever existed, the Pier of Fear, also known as the Spanish Tickler. The Pier of Fear is a device that strikes fear into the hearts of those who hear about it. It is a gruesome and brutal instrument of torture, used throughout history to inflict pain and suffering on its victims. From the Spanish Inquisition to the reign of King Henry VIII, the Pier of Fear has been used to torture and execute heretics, traitors, and dissidents. Its legacy has influenced modern human rights movements and serves as a reminder of the need for justice, accountability, and respect for human dignity. But what exactly is the Pier of Fear? How does it work? And what makes it so terrifying? In this video, we will explore the history and use of the Pier of Fear, examining famous cases and its impact on modern society. We will also discuss the ethics of torture and its effectiveness in gathering reliable intelligence. Is torture ever justified? What does international law say about the use of torture? If you are interested in learning more about the Pure of Fear, its history, and its impact on modern society, then this video is for you. So sit back grab some popcorn, and prepare to be terrified by the most terrifying execution and torture device that ever existed, the Pier of Fear. The history of torture devices is a dark and gruesome one, and the Pier of Fear is also one of the most terrifying among them. This device was designed to inflict immense pain and suffering on its victims, and was used extensively during the Spanish Inquisition in the 15th century. The origins of the Pier of Fear can be traced back to the Middle Ages, when various torture methods were developed to extract confessions from prisoners. The device itself consists of a long pole with spikes at the end. The spikes were designed to penetrate the victim's body and cause intense pain. The Pier of Fear was primarily used to extract confessions from those accused of heresy or witchcraft. During the Spanish Inquisition, the device was used extensively to punish those who refused to confess their crime. The victim was tied down to a table or chair, and the device was then inserted into their rectum or vagina. The torturer would then twist the pole, causing the spikes to tear into the victim's flesh and internal organs. The use of the Pier of Fear was not limited to the Spanish Inquisition. It was also used in other countries, including France and England, during the Middle Ages. However, its use declined in the 18th century with the rise of more humane methods of punishment. Its design consists of a long pole with sharp pointed spikes at the end. These spikes are designed to inflict severe pain and suffering on the victim by penetrating their flesh and internal organs. The device comes in various forms, but the most common type is the rectal or vaginal pair. The pear-shaped end of the device is inserted into the victim's rectum or vagina and then slowly opened up by turning a screw. As the device expands, the sharp spikes tear into the victim's flesh, causing extreme pain and damage. Another variation of the pier of fear is the oral pair. This device is designed to be inserted into the victim's mouth and then expanded to tear apart their tongue, throat, and jaws. The pain inflicted by the oral pair was often so severe that victims would confess to anything to stop the torture. The Pier of Fear was also used in a modified form as a punishment for adultery. The victim, usually a woman, would be forced to wear a spiked metal collar around their neck, preventing them from lying down or resting their head. The spikes on the collar were designed to dig into the victim's flesh, causing immense pain and discomfort. The device was also used as a punishment for homosexuality, with the rectal pair being inserted into the victim's anus and slowly expanded. The pain caused by this torture was often so severe that it could lead to death. The use of the Spanish tickler had a devastating psychological impact on both the victims and the executioners. The torture device was designed to inflict extreme pain and suffering on its victims, 
causing physical and emotional trauma that could last a lifetime. For the victims, the psychological impact of torture using the peer of fear was severe. The pain caused by the spikes tearing into their flesh and internal organs was excruciating, and the fear of further torture was constant. Victims were often left with permanent physical disabilities, such as loss of bladder or bowel control, as well as lasting emotional trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD. The psychological impact on the executioners was also significant. Torture using the peer of fear was often carried out by the inquisitors, who were members of the Catholic Church. The use of torture was justified by the belief that it was necessary to save the souls of the accused and bring them back into the fold of the church. However, the repeated use of torture had a profound effect on the inquisitors, many of whom suffered from guilt, shame, and depression as a result of their actions. The use of the peer of fear also had a wider psychological impact on society as a whole. It created a culture of fear and suspicion where anyone could be accused of heresy, witchcraft, or adultery and subjected to torture and execution. This fear and mistrust contributed to the social and political instability of the time. Did you know that similar devices have been used throughout history and across cultures? One such device was the Chinese death by a thousand cuts, also known as Ling Chi where the victim was slowly dismembered and left to die in excruciating pain. Another example is the Scottish Maiden, a beheading device made of iron and shaped like a woman. It was used to execute criminals, and some say it inspired the creation of the guillotine. In ancient Rome, the brazen bull was a bronze statue used as a torture device. The victim would be placed inside the statue and slowly roasted to death while the screams they made were heard through the bull's open mouth, which acted as a horn. Moving on to the Middle Ages, there was a variety of torture devices used, such as the rack, the Iron Maiden, and the Pair of Anguish. The latter was a pear-shaped instrument inserted into the victim's orifice, such as the mouth, anus, or vagina, and then slowly expanded until it caused severe injury or death. Finally, the most well-known torture device, the Iron Maiden, was used in Europe during the 16th and 17th centuries. It was a coffin-like device with spikes on the inside that would impale the victim when the door was closed. Now, let's take a look at some famous cases of the Spanish tickler being used for torture or execution. One of the most infamous cases was during the Spanish Inquisition where the peer of fear was used to torture and execute heretics. In fact, it is believed that the device got its name from the screams of its victims, who were said to sound like the bleeding of a sheep. Another well-known case was during the reign of King Henry VIII in England. The peer of fear was used to torture and execute those accused of treason and other crimes against the crown. It is rumored that even Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's second wife was subjected to the peer of fear before her execution. In more recent history, the peer of fear was used during the dictatorship of Francisco Franco in Spain. Political prisoners and dissidents were subjected to torture and execution using the device, as well as other cruel methods. It is important to note that the use of torture, including the peer of fear, is universally condemned as a violation of human rights and dignity. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, a treaty ratified by over 170 countries, explicitly prohibits torture and other cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment. The use of torture, including devices like the peer of fear, has been widely condemned as a violation of human rights and dignity. In many countries, the use of torture is illegal and those who engage in such practices can be prosecuted under international law. The peer of fear has become a symbol of the horrors of torture, reminding us of the dark side of human nature and the need for justice and accountability. Its legacy has influenced modern human rights movements, which seek to promote dignity and respect for all people, regardless of their background or beliefs. 
Moreover, the pure fear has had a lasting impact on popular culture, appearing in numerous films, television shows, and literature as a symbol of terror and fear. It has become a shorthand for the cruelty and brutality of authoritarian regimes and oppressive governments. In recent years, the use of torture has come under increased scrutiny, particularly in the context of counter-terrorism operations. Many human rights advocates and legal experts argue that torture is not only immoral, but also ineffective in gathering reliable intelligence. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on fascinating historical topics.